Welcome to the brand new Draymond Green Show YouTube channel. Hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our content. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Draymond Green Show. Uh, recording this the morning after a huge, huge Dubs victory over the Mavericks. Uh, it's about time we won a home game. As we know, that's been a problem. Road record, pretty stellar home record, not so much. So that was a good dub for us at home also. Crazy trip, uh, or crazy period in the schedule, I would say. Not necessarily a crazy trip, but coming off a nine-day, five-game trip uh, to Minnesota, which started off with a loss uh, in a game that I thought we clearly should have won, um, and we just let it get away. Um, Miami, big-time win. Never easy to go there and get a dub, uh, but that was a big-time win for us. Orlando, huge win. Obviously, I got ejected from that game pretty fast, and the guys held it down that game, which set us up for Charlotte, which is a game we should go in, and San Antonio, uh, which Wimby is a problem, but also a game that we should win. Uh, by the way, I know I said on here a few little while back that um, Wimby shouldn't be the defensive player of the year, and I lied. All right, the NBA season is in full swing, coming down the stretch. Then we move right into the playoffs in April, May, and June. I can't wait. Spice things up with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA right now. All you have to do is put down 5 bucks and get $150 instantly in bonus bets. Pretty good trade-off. I pay 5 I get $150. North Carolina listeners, do not forget, Welcome to the party. DraftKings Sportsbook now live in your state, North Carolina. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. It takes 90 seconds. The code is Colin, C-O-L-I-N. Again, 90 seconds. Download DraftKings Sportsbook app. Put in Colin. New customers bet five. Get 150 back in bonus bets instantly. That is the trade. All right. The code is always Colin. The crown is yours. Oh. Uh. Wimby should be the defensive player of the year because he is that amazing defensively. But they just suck. And I love Coach Pop. Uh, I think I've shared that with you all before. Like, absolutely love Coach Pop. And if I'm honest, I'm still a little hurt because I didn't get a chance to hug Coach Pop in the game. Uh, didn't get a chance to talk to him before the game and after the game. Everything was kind of going on. I got a signed Wimby jersey for DJ, uh, which was Absolutely exciting. Uh, one that he can hang in his bedroom and for the next 15 to 20 years, he'll be watching arguably the best player in the league with his jersey on the wall. Uh, and so I was very excited about that and probably a little sidetrack to get that for DJ that I didn't get a chance to hug Coach Pop and embrace him. And that's my guy. Absolutely love him. Uh, one of the golden guys. Got that goal together, and the relationship built there will last a lifetime. So I'm very thankful for Coach Pop, and I'm sorry that I didn't get a chance to say hi but from a distance, and it just missed me at the end of the game. Still salty about that. Anyway, Wimby is definitely the defensive player of the year. The way he impacts the game, both offense, I mean, both uh, on the defensive end, whether it's off the ball, on the ball, it's a problem. When you when you start driving to the hole. And, like, guys may have a layup, maybe not, and they just turn out and go the other way. That's a problem. And that's a block shot, in a sense. You know, and no one will account for that. It's like a screen. You go set it in a screen, no one's going to give you an assist. But the guy's wide open to knock a shot down. Wimby, you, you drive into the lane and get a layup, and you see Wimby, and you just go the other way? That's a block shot. And so let's also talk about how many of those Wimby has this year. We saw one last night with Christian Braun and Michael Porter Jr. end up hitting the three. Unfortunate that Michael Porter Jr. hitting the three, but that's a block shot. Like, and on block shots, sometimes you get the ball back, and guess what? You get it back, you kick it out, you hit a three. Offensive rebound, kick it out, hit a three. Right? Like, that's essentially the same thing. And so, uh, with what women, and, you know, I am I say that, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, obviously, Team record matters. And everybody who say team record don't matter is a lie. Um, it definitely matters. And they're not quite that good. Not quite Wimby's fault. Um, 
But you kind of had to be that bad in order to get Wimby. And I think that San Antonio team has some pieces, a few pieces, not many, but a few pieces around Wimby. Um, and that's not counting like a Zach Collins, right? Like Zach Collins is a vet. Uh, he's going to be around, like, and you need good vets like that, solid. Um, gonna, You know what you're going to get every night. But, you know, you got like KJ, uh, Keldon, um, Johnson. You got Devin Vassell. Uh, Trey Jones, you know, I think I think Trey Jones is a is a is a good point guard in this league. Not necessarily, maybe not necessarily a starter, but any good team is you know if you're going to have a chance to win championships, you need a really good backup, and Trey Jones is absolutely that. You know, so I think they got a few pieces around them, but they need to fill out a lot of other pieces, and and then also figure out how do we want teams to look like? What's the best look? of a team around Wimby. You know, like, you look at LeBron James, always going to be some shooters on the floor, right? Like, over the course of his years, you know, you the Mike Millers, the James Jones, the J.R. Smiths, Kyle Korver. Um, the list goes on and on and on. You know, when they won a championship with the Lakers, Kyle Kuzma was that shooter. Uh, you know, and so what are the teams going to look like around Wimby? And I think that's that's an important one. But I changed my stance. Wimby, Wimby probably should be defensive player of the year. What he's doing defensively. Um, dude had nine blocks last night. Like, that's against the Denver Nuggets. Best team in the NBA. Nine blocks. Like, man, that's affecting the game. And, and again, Wimby's not a liability on defense. Like, you're not just – he's not just getting blocks, you know? Like, some guys just get blocks, you know. Guys come weak side, get blocks. Like, but you can pick on them. You can't really pick on women. Dude can switch. Like, he's seven four, can move his feet. I don't know what lab he was created in, but I need to go create me a son in that lab because <laughs> dude is unbelievable. And I was tired as hell after that game because with Wimby, every possession you have to like be on. Because the moment he gets a slight advantage, right? Like, say if I relax and he duck in the paint, guess what? You done. Because he's so, he he get to, he, his angles to the rim with his lane. There's nothing you can do at that point. So with him, whether he's at the three-point line, you have to be on because guess what? If he catch it and he start raising up. Man, I had a couple contests on Wimby threes. And I'm talking about they were monster contests. Like, I'm pretty good at contesting jump shots. That's one of my specialties on the defensive end. I come up with some blocks on threes. Like, man, I had a couple monster contests on Wimby. I was nowhere near the ball. And I thought that that was very interesting. So with Wimby, at all point, at all times, no matter where he is on the floor, you have to be on. <clears throat> and that is tiring as hell. And so I was exhausted after that game. Nonetheless, that was a big time win for us. Uh, and then we go to, you know, um, come back home which leads us to last night. A uh, huge win over the Mavericks, 104 to 100. Two-way Wiggs was in the building in a major way. 23 points on 8 for 16 and 3 for 5. Uh, I'm still pissed at Wiggs. Why am I pissed at Wiggs? Because Wiggs came out aggressive. And then it was a couple possessions, right after the first couple shots he missed, that he came off screen and he was like, uh, who do I need to pass the ball? No, you go shoot the ball. We need Wiggs scoring. We need Wiggs aggressive. The pressure he puts on the rim, uh, the way he's been shooting the ball, lights out. And then pick, and, and, and while doing that, picking up Luka full court, the whole game, the entire game picking him up full court, not switching, getting over screens, fighting, battling. And Luka's great. You know, we know how great Luka is. Um, and Wiggs took on that challenge and had a big game for us. Yours truly with 11, 8, 6, and four steals, hey, man, that's 10 steals in two games. I feel really good, really good about myself. You know, it's that time of year um, where you kind of got to come alive. Like, like it's the most fun time of year, and I love it. I love this time. Uh, big block down the stretch. Tough play there. Uh, when you got Kyrie Irving coming downhill at you, it's a scary sight. And not a scary sight in the sense of like, oh, Kyrie's about to take off and dunk on you. Uh, but a scary sight in the sense of, like, Kyrie, as I said a couple weeks ago, Kyrie has every shot in basketball. 
you know, we saw the lefty running hook, right? Like, he has every shot in basketball. Mid-range floater, to the cup, best finisher, um, incredible finisher. He has every shot. And so when he's coming downhill at you with a lob threat like Daniel Gafford, what do you do? And so for me, obviously you're trying to cat him off, you're trying to play too. But with Kyrie, you 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 kind of have to commit because if not, he go, like he tricking you like you trying to trick him and he got the ball. So ultimately, you know, what he's trying to get to, he's good enough to get to it. And so if you go back and watch the play, I had to step all the way up to stop him. But the way my feet are angled, my feet are angled as such to where I'm cutting off one side of the floor. So the side that he's going to, which if you're dribbling the ball and you're Kyrie, it's the left side of the floor. If you're me and you're defending it, it's the right side of the floor. But I cut that whole side of the, bas- of the court off with my feet so that Kai couldn't continue going that way and to essentially um, kind of force him back towards where Daniel Gafford is on the baseline. Well, for me, once I see Kyrie picks up the ball and go to pass, there's no added extra movement, right? Like because of my foot position, that's just one drop step and jump. I'm jumping at the same time as Daniel Gafford. Now, if I'm being totally honest with you, in that situation, uh, it's Daniel Gafford, it's not Kyrie Irving, it's not Luka Doncic. And what I mean by that is Daniel Gafford's a 69% free throw shooter. He's not 90 like Kyrie Irving. Um, And Luka, maybe 70-some percent, but it's Luka. He's not missing free throws in the clutch. And so my mindset right there is I'm helping on Kyrie and I'm giving this drop up up to Gafford. Now, in order for him to get to the rim, he got to come back through me. So I understand that. But a key thing in that position is I'm in perfect position to foul. And so when I go up in that moment, I'm thinking, all right, I'm jumping. I'm not giving up an and one. So if I don't feel like I have an advantage to affect the shot, Block the shot, which I did, but not even necessarily block the shot. Affect the shot to where Daniel Gaffer has to make the shot and not a dunk. If I can't do that, I'm fouling. So I'm in perfect position to foul, which for me is money. Once I jump, I then make the decision, oh, I can get it, right? And I get the block, get the rebound, and we're off to the races. Um, and then, you know, down the stretch, the ball was in my hand. How about that? And you know, made a couple of plays down the stretch to, to close the game out. But really big time win for us, especially with uh, the Rockets coming out to play. Um, <laughs> they have lost a couple in a row. And, you know, you, you're three games behind with seven games left and you're losing the tiebreaker. So four games behind in a sense with seven to go. Uh, my math serves me correctly. Tomorrow will be an opportunity to end their season, Uh, their playoff hopes. If my math serves me correctly, maybe there will be one more game. I haven't looked that up. Uh, That's just some rough math for you math geniuses out there that's going to be like, no, they're not mathematically uh, eliminated. And you, like, great, almost. Uh, But anyway, so... Looking forward to that game. Obviously, big game in Houston. We're accustomed to big games in Houston. It'll be fun. And we got the MIDI God on our side this time. So uh, that is Chris Paul, for those of you who are wondering. So definitely looking forward to that game tomorrow. It'll be a fun game. Those young guys are playing well. Jalen Green is playing out of his mind. Uh, Looking like the Jalen Green that everybody thought was coming into the NBA when he came in. He's taking that next leap, and it is looking very prominent. Uh, So, you know, they got the vet. Uh, Freddie V running the show, a uh, bunch of young guys getting after it. And so, be a big game, fun game, uh, but one that I feel totally confident that we should be able to go get if we come in and play our brand of basketball. But a big time, big time win for us. And, you know, five game win streak, which comes at the right time. So, Looking forward to that. In other news, a guy who I got respect for, um, and so I'm not going to sit here and like slander because I got I got respect for for the Matrix. Bashan Marion, my man, 
my brother, you asked for it. So let's talk about it. On Club 520, uh, shout out to Club 520. I went on Club 520. Jeff Teague and the guys. Um, I enjoy being on Club 520. And quite frankly, our interview wasn't long enough. So maybe I'll go back one day if they'll have me back. But that was a fun-ass podcast to do. And I enjoyed it. So we'll see. However, that's one of the great ones out there. In, in a world of podcasts everywhere, that is one that is fun. It's funny. It's um you learn different things. Like I saw the other day, he's talking about different referees. Like you get an unfiltered Jeff Teague, which nobody in the league knew they or in the world knew they needed. Uh, but the world needs Jeff Teague and what and what those guys is bringing uh, to the landscape, to the media landscape. Uh, it's absolutely incredible to watch and fun. And and Sean Marion goes on Club Five Twenty. And he says, Draymond, I think I love his tenacity, love his energy, love his heart, but I still think I'm, I was a way better defender than he was. And the reason I say that is because when I had to guard point guards, point, when, when I actually guarded you, I guarded you for the whole game. No, yeah, yeah. I didn't, it wasn't no, mm. no, no, no few minutes here and there or trying to spare somebody. I guarded, I locked in with you guys for the whole game. And like, most guys ain't doing that. True. You're, yeah. So it's easy for, and it's way, Simpler for guys just to, to do with every possession and switch. Everybody switch now, but I mean, I can guard somebody for a quarter. It's easy to do that. Let me guard that guy for the whole game, though. Most guys is not doing it. I'm the only person ever in NBA history to do that. In one playoff series on the way to my fourth championship, I guarded. I don't even remember the first round. Uh, who, who did we play in the first round? Jackson, you remember who we played in the first round? Denver Nuggets, no Jamal Murray. Okay. So who do we play in the second round? Or was that the second round? I think that was the second round. And then Dallas was the... Dallas was the you? conference finals. Grizzlies. Ah! That's right. Ah! There it is. So in one playoff series... By the way, guys, you ever want not win a championship and no one cares? Like I, It's hard to even remember that. So just remember that for those of you out there celebrating second places. Um, so in one playoff run on the way to my fourth championship, you got me guarding Joker. Didn't shut Joker down by any stretch of the imagination, but you can bet your bottom dollar it makes a huge difference when you don't have to double. So you keep bodies on bodies, you neutralize the rest of the guys. <clears throat> game winning still. Game still and still. That series. By no means did I lock Joker up. I'm not saying that. But I think Joker respected the defense that was played on him. Okay. Jaron Jackson, young, athletic, big, who can step out and shoot the three, all star. Jalen Brunson, and don't tell me, oh, that was Jalen for Dallas because that same Jalen, <laughs> four months later, went and took the Knicks by storm. Jalen Brunson, all-star. Jalen Brown in the NBA Finals, all-star. Those were my matchups for the series. So to say I can guard a guy for a game, what about a series? And by the way, I don't think Sean Marion couldn't guard a guard for a series. But the proof is in the pudding, and the film is right there. Um, need I say more? I I've gone into games and guarded guards my entire career when I've needed to. So, you know, um, I get what he was getting at or trying to get at, but you actually got to watch the clips. Watch the film. Don't watch the clips. Watch the film. And then what I do off the ball is a <laughs> totally different thing. Um, not sure many people in the NBA can affect a game how I can affect a game defensively off the ball. So with all due respect to Sean Marion and his defensive capabilities, because I, again, think Sean Marion was a great defender, It ain't only you, my man. It is not only you. 
Maybe it was before me, <laughs> but not since me, and it won't be after me. It ain't only you. So before you make statements like that, you got to check the tape. You got to have some facts because the facts are right there. And I don't need to go elsewhere. You know, I don't need to go to like, at times I had to guard CJ McCullough when we were playing in Portland. And times I had to guard Chris Paul when we were playing. He was like, I don't need to go into all those things. I'm going to just go right there. Series wins, which led to my fourth championship. So shout out to the Matrix. Uh, We'd love to have him on the show if he want to come on. Um, no ill will here, but the facts are the facts. In other news, before we take some questions uh, live here on the BR app, shout out to the BR team. Joel B returned from a two-month absence, and he played 29 minutes. Had 24, six boards, seven assists, three steals, and six turnovers. Um, I must say, I was very shocked for Joe uh, to come back. And the reason I was very shocked is come back in game 76 after missing 30 games or whatever uh, that number was. And they're now 41 and 35. And I saw something last night that said their record is 14 and 27 without Joe L. Meaning, the chances that that team is uh, going to win a championship is very slim. And to me, some of the moves they made at the deadline was kind of like, you know what, we're throwing in the towel. Uh, this season ain't going to work out. Let's start focusing on next year. And to see Joel come back with that big knee brace on was pretty surprising to me. Um, needless to say, what I do know is Joel just loved playing basketball. So any chance that Joel can play basketball, he going to play basketball. But I was pretty shocked uh, to see Joe come back off the meniscus injury um, at this point in the season where they're now in the play-in spot. And, like, I don't necessarily think they have the roster to compete at a high level, you know. So it could be just kind of his way of tuning up for the Olympics. I don't know. But um, I was shocked by that. Nonetheless, he looked good. Uh, and obviously you can see some of his movements are off and like little ginger going this way and stopping and different things like that, which all takes time. I did see some Joel said in his interview, uh, which was interesting to me. He said, this will be the hardest game I had. And I disagree with that because when you come back from injury, you kind of have a couple games where you like this and then you tank for like a couple, two, three games. Because it's no longer the adrenaline, right? Like, it's not, now you just playing off of, and Joel's great. So, like, maybe Joel won't go through the same thing I went through. And most people go through. And it's not even necessarily that his game will go through that because Joel's a scorer. He's going to score the basketball, but he'll feel it. And so, even if it doesn't show to you necessarily, he'll feel it because you kind of like hit this boot and then you crash for him and then you start to level out. And, um, and so, it'll be interesting to see how he's feeling you know, moving uh, on, you know, the next three games or so, uh, how that starts to change and where that goes. But I was very, um, very surprised to see them or see him back out on the floor. Nonetheless, always great to have the greats on the floor. And so good to have Joel back. Uh, obviously, he brings something to the league that's different than what anyone else brings. And you know, uh, he takes that team from a non-playoff team to a contender, in a sense. Um, and so, shout out to Joe. It's good to see him back. Surprise, but that's that. Uh, before we get to the mailbag question, I have to say, uh, or just speak on, Caitlin Clark uh, taking down LSU, coming back 41-12 and after being defeated by that team last year opportunity to go back to the Final Four, and Caitlin came out and got it done, dominated the game, uh, took her team back to the Final Four. And the question out there is, is she the best offensive player, college player ever? I mean, I saw Steph Curry play in college. And so, you know, um, Steph was different. Uh, needless to say, Caitlin is a problem. Uh, she 
I know there's like this talk of big three and WNBA and how she gonna she's gonna be really good in the WNBA right away because the way she shoots the ball, the way she passes the ball and get everybody involved, she's gonna she's gonna come in with Aaliyah Boston who's also gonna uh, take on double teams and if you help off the wrong person and then uh, and usually there's someone you can help off of on the team. So once you start helping off that person. If I am the Indiana Fever coach, I'm going to watch the film of the Golden State Warriors. What do they do when teams double team off non-shooters? I need to know all of these things going into the season because I need to take full advantage of Caitlin Clark and her abilities and how defense is going to react to her. And so that was great to watch. Um, UConn and UConn, we had this conversation earlier this year. Hilton Armstrong's on our staff. Rudy Gay was in uh Rudy Gay was in camp with us and we were talking about blue bloods like who's the blue bloods in america and he's like you kind of blue blood we like hell no rudy you kind of ain't no blue blood the reality is if you look at yukon's resume they are definitely in that blue blood territory and if you ask me they're still not a blue blood but if they win this championship y'all are blue blood um but both teams yukon women yukon men in the final four as is north carolina state men and north carolina state women um, I think UConn is winning it all. Uh, the way that they're playing on the men's side, I think they're winning it all. I don't see anybody beating them. Um, everybody talking about they'll beat the Detroit Pistons. They'll they'll probably beat the depleted Detroit Pistons that's playing like seven two way guys. I mean seven G League call ups in ten, ten days. But the real Detroit Pistons that was at the beginning of the season. You kind of not beating that team. Stop it. Still the NBA, and that ain't happening. But this current version with Isaiah Stewart out and this guy out and Bogdanovich traded and Alec Burks gone and you name it, yeah, they'll probably beat those guys. Maybe not, but they got a chance. Uh, but yes, I'm picking UConn. And then shout out to young Juju. Juju went out there this season, got it done. 27 a game, took her team to the Elite Eight. Freshman, I'm looking forward to watching the face of women's hoop as this thing continue on. So shout out to Ju. Keep putting the work in, Ju. I love the emotion after the game. It should hurt. It should hurt. Because next year when you up there hoisting that trophy, you look back on that moment and you felt that pain. You went through that pain. And because you went through the pain and not around the pain, you get rewarded for that. So, obviously, still got to put the work in. I have zero doubt in my mind that Drew going to put the work in. But Juju is a problem. So, shout out to Drew. Great season. Also, great to see Paige back out there doing what Paige does, making big shots, big moments. Absolutely lovely to see. Love to see where the women's game is going. Uh, but shout out to them. That was super dope. Before we get out of here, Jackson, you got a few questions for us? Yes, sir. I do. Let's start it out with from at Lord Flock. Hey, Draymond. Not sure if you saw, but Stefan Diggs was just traded from the Bills to the Texans for a second round pick. What is your take? As Did a that just happen fan? right now? Like It happened we like right here? when we started recording. That, Basically right when we started recording. That is fire. Uh, Stefan Diggs is, is a Hall of Fame wide receiver. And to get him paired up right now with a young C.J. Stroud who just took his team to the playoffs uh, with that defense that the Texans got, with that head coach, I love it. I love it. Um, not sure how much Stephon Diggs has left in the tank. I think Stephon Diggs has a bunch left in the tank, but I have seen those questions on uh, NFL talk shows, like what does he have left in the tank and blah, blah, blah. Um, Stephon Diggs, I think, you know, number one, he's he can play in the slot. So at, if you're playing in the slot, he can still go be dangerous there. And, you know, we know he can take the top off. So I'm looking forward to that. I think that's fire. But what that also says is the Buffalo Bills are done. Uh, every now and then you have a window. And when that window opens, if you don't step through it, it shuts. And that's what just happened to Buffalo. They got rid of a bunch of key players. They're getting rid of huge weapons and, I mean, big-time weapons. Like, So it's over for Buffalo. 
uh, they will return back to NFL purgatory and not be that good. And they'll win some games because they'll win some games. But what, as great as that is for the Texans, they just plucked the guy off the AFC team and that AFC team is done. So that's my thoughts on that. Not a football expert. Don't claim to be. Know a little bit about football. I love football. I watch a bunch of football. So I think I know a little bit, but that's my take. Next one from at long, long live yellow five. If Wiggs keeps playing like this, are we back to being a title threat? I mean, we got to get in the playoffs first, so I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, Cause we got a lot of work to do just to get in the playoffs. But once we get in the playoffs, I always think we're a title threat um, with the pieces that we have on the Florida experience. I don't ever doubt that we're we're a title threat and Wiggs playing that basketball. Wiggs have to play that basketball in order for us to be that. So, yes, for sure. Um, But first things first, let's just get in the playoffs first. All right, we'll do one more question. But before that, just a reminder to everyone to subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Draymond Green Show. We have a amazing interview dropping next week you do not want to miss fire i promise you do not want to miss absolutely last question from at asia b can Wemby become a top five player of all time can Wemby become a top five player of all time oh that's such a subjective thing because you start getting into like uh wilt chamberlain or you know like people start going way back on bill russell like and so i'm not going to sit here and talk about the top five player of all time like Again, with Wim, with, with, with Wimby's tools uh, and his love for the game, the sky is the limit. Uh, special, special, special. Can he be? Yeah, I mean, he has the, the tools. Uh, but that's such a far, far-fetched thing, like top five all the time. But Wimby is a problem. And as you all know, I don't really um, – I'm not a hater. I give credit where credit's due, but it ain't easy to get credit for me. But Wimby, Wimby is a, is a special breed. And so can he be top five? I guess technically yes, but what is top five, right? Like my top five is this, your top five is that. Jackson's top five is here, and Faith's top five is over there. Like who, who what is the top five? Like Wimby can be absolutely special and, and he can be mentioned when it's all said and done, if he does it the right way, which I have no doubt he will, he will be mentioned with the greats for sure. Top five, what is a top five? That is a wrap on this episode of the Draymond Green Show. Always appreciate your questions when we are on here on the BR Live app uh, and definitely appreciate you all tuning in. If you tuned in live, thank you. If you're tuning in later because you're getting your podcast where you get your podcast. We also thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. Till next time, it's a wrap. Peace.